This is the E-Blaster. It's the name of a super unique PC case with an equally unique solution to space and travel problems. But in an attempt to solve some problems, it created a few challenges along the way. Are they insurmountable? Heck no, but they do take commitment. And we're gonna tell you everything you need to know about this portable PC chassis right here, right now on Robitech after a word from our sponsors. This video is brought to you by our official Robitech build mat. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll probably recognize it. We love these things. They're super thick and durable and they're absolutely huge in size, measuring at 5.5 millimeters thick and 24 by 48 inches wide. This one that we have right here, man, this has been in the studio for like four years and it's still holding up great, no problem. We've also included all sorts of useful graphics showing different PC form factor sizes, including schematic diagrams and connectors you'll encounter probably during your PC build. Not to mention, there's plenty of open space for screw and tool organization. We designed it like this so no matter what skill level of builder you are, it could be a helpful tool for pretty much everyone. Now, you can find these build mounts for sale on our Newegg store, and it's a great way to support us directly if you enjoy the content we make. Thank you so much for your support, and let's get back to the video. This is not like any other PC case we've ever built inside of, and it, and it really has an interesting story on how it all came about. Last year at Computex, a few members of the Robitech team got to meet this guy. His name is Jonan Bassen. He's a Danish inventor and the catalyst behind the E-Blaster's creation. Jonan, he saw a problem. He and his friends were growing up, getting into relationships, and moving on from their days as single gamers, but not out of a desire to leave gaming altogether. But because space for a gaming setup was out of the picture as significant others and kids started to join the party, he was looking for solutions. And he looked at laptop hardware, which has come a long way. But laptops, especially when looking at desktop replacements, are super expensive. But what if you could have all of the power of a desktop PC, the smaller footprint of an ITX setup, and the ability to set up and tear down in a matter of seconds? And out of that vision, this right here was born, the E-Blaster. Now, before we get too far into this video, I wanna give a huge thank you to Jonan for taking the time to share the story of the E-Blaster with us and the Robitech team, and for sending us one over that we could then build inside of, fly to Dallas, and allowing us to review it here today. So let's get to know it a bit better, starting with the price. At the time of this video, the E-Blaster is available at Amazon for around $600, which is no small amount of money, but we're looking at something that isn't your typical PC case either. Now this thing is made up of a combination of auto-grade injection molded plastic and aluminum with honeycombing for ventilation, including a very special spot right here, which we're gonna call the Linus hole because when Linus asks for a hole, he gets one. That sounds weird, but we're gonna go with it. As for physical dimensions, the E-Blaster is just under 25 inches or 630 millimeters in length, about three inches or 75 millimeters thick, and a little over 16 inches or 410 millimeters tall. Now, that's with the legs compact, which adjust with a lever system on the handles and without the monitor attached. And yes, you did hear that right, but you've also seen it along the way. The E-Blaster has a VESA 100 mount for the monitor, but they're recommending you use a 25 one inch though. And what we're using right here is a 27 inch one. And yes, we're gonna talk about this a little bit more in our conclusion. Now, but before we move on from physical dimensions, when it comes to weight, the E-Blaster, it plays it a little coy here, but it's listed on the product website, but Amazon lists the package weight at a little over 10 and a half pounds or 4.8 kilograms. Now, what the E-Blaster is less coy about is the fact that it has two USB 3 and two USB 2 type A ports, separate audio jacks for mic and line out, an RJ45 ethernet port, and a power supply extension. And this is where we have to take a, a huge detour from our typical PC case review because the E-Blaster is just not a standard PC case at all. Understand this is not a dig. The company is very clear that with this chassis, order of operation, the parts you choose, and reading the manual are all non-negotiable. If you step out of line with any of these, you're honestly, you're just gonna have a bad time. Now with that in mind, let's talk about what fits inside of the E-Blaster. Starting with motherboards, the E-Blaster supports mini ITX boards, and that's kind of about it. What's incredibly important here is that the ITX motherboard you're going to use needs to work with an air cooler that's less than 57 millimeters or 2.24 inches tall. So be mindful of that because sometimes those higher VRAM heat sinks can get in the way of some of the air coolers. And we actually got to use a very special one that if you go and check out the live stream, you'll get to see what we actually got to use. It was pretty rad. Now, one thing about this is that it does trim down the CPU that will thrive inside of the system. 
Now we were able, because of that cooler I mentioned earlier, use a 9800X 3D, but we had some very big limitations on the amount of power that we were able to give it. Since we're talking about height limits, we also wanna point out that using low profile RAM is actually a really good idea. Now moving on to GPU support, the E-Blaster can support GPUs with a max length of 330 millimeters, but it really does need to be a two slot card. For our build, we're using a Founders Edition RTX 5080. Now you have to consider cooling because outside of the fans on the GPU, the fan on the PSU, and the CPU cooler itself, there really isn't any active cooling in the E-Blaster. Now we'll talk more about this when we get to the actual thermals. As for PSU support, the E-Blaster requires the use of either SFX or SFXL power supplies. You do have a bit of space in here for extra cabling, but I don't know that I would go wild with adding a bunch of storage drive, even though the E-Blaster can fit up to four SSDs that can be mounted on a tray inside. That tray, <laughs> more about that later. Now, one thing before we look at thermal performance, let's talk about the cabling because there's more than meets the eye here. Just like there's more to see here, both at Robitech and Robitech Live. So why don't you go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of it. Okay, let's start with the front IO connections. The E-Blaster has USB 3.0, it has a USB 2.0 cable, and it has front panel connectors for power switch and power LEDs and the HD audio cable. Now, we did actually end up wrapping the front panel connectors with a black fiber core, I guess is what it'd be called. We'll put a link to that down in the description below, but it was basically because it's blue, green, and red, and it was really, really unsightly, we had to hide it, but something to just be aware of. The E-Blaster comes with an angled RJ45 connection to make use of the ethernet port in the back, an angled power cable extension, a display port cable that's thin and very specialized, and a power cable splitter to help run power to both your monitor and your PSU. There's also a PCI riser cable included. Now, it's Gen 4, so just be aware, because the GPU actually lays right up next to the motherboard, which sounds cozy in theory, but creates some issues with the cable actually staying in place. Now, I do wish there was an option to reverse GPU orientation, especially for cards like the FE, because blowing hot air directly onto the monitor, it just doesn't seem like a good idea. Though, after 60 plus hours of use, uh, we didn't see much of an issue. Now, one thing before we get into parts and start talking about thermals is that if you go to the eBlaster website, there's actually a whole page that shows their recommendations for all the different hardware, which absolutely do work. And it even shows how it compares against to an equally priced laptop if you're interested in checking that out. Again, we went beyond what they recommended and we're very happy with what we built, but Let's talk about thermals and how the heck does the E-Blaster keep thermals in their place, especially with no extra fan mounts? Well, as non-standard as this case is, we, we'd like to test it the way we test any other PC case to find out if thermals are good. Though, like many of our mini ITX or micro ATX case reviews, the data here is going to be in isolation because it's just a different system altogether. So starting with CPU temps under CPU load, the E-Blaster kept our Ryzen 7 9800X3D at a reasonable 79 degrees right where we told it that it couldn't go above because we put on some heavy CPU restrictions. Now, if you wanna learn more and check out the live stream, which we've been referencing the whole time, you could actually just see us where we built the whole thing there and see what we did in terms of limiting the CPU. But obviously we wanna see the low temps and this is a long way from thermal max on the CPU and that was intentionally set up that way. As for CPU temps while gaming though, the E-Blaster averaged 73 degrees Celsius across the five titles. Now keep in mind, this is at 1440p, so we're splitting the load between the GPU and the CPU. And this brings us to GPU temps. While gaming, our test GPU, the RTX 5080 FE, averaged 70 degrees Celsius under GPU load. Now, I did tell you Jonan recommended we do some undervolting here, but after we did our testing, we didn't really feel the need for doing that, and our gaming temps were absolutely fine. But for a 5090, pretty sure this is gonna just be terrible from a thermal standpoint. So when we put all the thermal data together, essentially the story is this. If you're smart with your combination of parts and you have some know-how on the techniques for like undervolting and limiting your CPU, the E-Blaster shouldn't have any thermal issues whatsoever, at least if you're sitting in front of the machine. For anyone standing behind it like I am right now, you can just feel the heat radiating right here. It's a little warm, but overall, it's, it's not really gonna create like an air fryer situation or anything like that. But it does get a little toasty. But comparatively speaking, if we look at the temps we saw in our most recent Fractal Terra build, these were on par with what we're seeing on the E-Blaster, and we did end up setting similar restrictions on that build as well for the 9800X 3D. With thermals tested, a build completed, and tons of gaming and travel time with it, would we recommend the E-Blaster? I have a lot to say about this one, and I hope this comes off as constructive criticism for E-Blaster because I truly believe that they have something very magical on their hands here. I mean, 
I love this thing. But I just feel like what we have today is a good version 1.0 that has some room to grow. As we were talking about this as a team, our criticism really breaks down into four categories where we think the e-blaster could be improved. If you watched our stream where we built the rig for QuakeCon, you can see the struggle I had with the build process and the instructions. I followed the instructions, I read the manual, I watched the Debauer video, and even had a one-on-one -on -one with the maker himself. And I wanted to, at times, throw this thing against the wall when I was building it. Again, I have built over 1,500 PCs, and some of those have been inside of incredibly challenging cases, like the Geometric Future Model 2 Arc. And no, I'm no stranger to difficult builds, but even with all of the support and all the stuff I watched, None of those experiences prepared me for the e-blaster. Now, some of the order of operation listed in the manual was out of step with what was actually needed to be done in the moment. This caused a lot of backtracking, which just kills some of the joy of building. I think if some of this could be fixed with better step-by-step -step tutorials on the product side and some better documentation to match. I mean, honestly, I, probably one of the best ways to learn is my step-by-step -step video, but even then, something similar to what I do for my step-by-step -step guides on this will save people a lot of pain. Now, speaking of the manual, and as far as we can tell, it's not really readily available on the site, so you can't see what you're getting into before you're buying one. And outside of a form, there is no clear picture of where support for the product is supposed to come from. So just to recap, when it comes to this, there are just like brackets that you have to remove that are honestly very challenging. There's an SSD tray that literally took two of us to get out because it just was jammed in there so tightly. And the riser cable, which resulted in an hour long period of troubleshooting that ended up being way more complicated than it should have. And the manual, it didn't help cover any of this stuff. So it just feels like it needs more support. Now, speaking of support, let's talk about monitor support. I gotta be honest, if I'm building a PC to outperform a laptop, I'm gonna need to do better than a 1080p monitor. Now the eBlaster site doesn't say you can't use another resolution, but the 25 inch size restriction kinda does. The option for 1440p or higher resolution monitors at 25 inches are typically non-existent, which pushes us to go to a 27 inch OLED to accompany the eBlaster that we used at QuakeCon. While we were able to get away with it, it did present some mechanical challenges with trying to get the legs to work properly. But I gotta be honest, the legs and getting them to work properly kind of existed before the monitor was even mounted on. I'm not actually sure that there was a time when we were setting up or tearing down the e-blaster where the legs worked the first time. And that, and that wasn't just me trying to use it. No less than three members of our team also struggled with it, including us trying to get it to set up for this review. And that brings us to the mechanical function. In some instances, we had screws that were too tight and took way too much effort to get out of the e-blaster, whether we think we were gonna strip them or not. And then we had situations where the PCI riser still just pops out of place after we move it. I discovered this at QuakeCon, and then again back in the studio when we filmed and tested, and again, no less than three team members experienced the same thing, where the riser cable just pops out and you have to repop it in, and if you don't know any better, you might end up taking the whole build apart thinking something was wrong. What's also limiting here is how the GPU has to be oriented. There was just no good way to plug in an additional monitor without removing structural pieces of the case. And when you do take off the top and then it doesn't hold in the back, then the whole thing just kind of feels kind of whack. I know this is far from the original intention of the e-blaster, but I gotta be honest, man, I've been to a lot of lands and a lot of people use Multimon and I use a little small one and it's just precarious to do. I just, I really, if, if we have the Linus hole, can we have the Robitech hole that just has like a hole right here so we can just plug another video monitor in? Then finally, there's the price. $600 is no small investment, but I'm gonna be honest here. There's a lot of engineering that went into this thing and the materials, and this isn't a typical PC case. It's doing way more than any typical PC case does, especially with the extra cabling, ethernet pass-through, and PCI riser cable included. Okay, I need to take a step back here because I'm ranting more than I'm offering helpful feedback. So here is the feedback. The e-blaster, it's a magical first step, but like any first steps, there are gonna be some wobbles and falls along the way. Fortunately, I never had the rig fall on me, but there are some places, like I pointed out earlier, that it falls a bit short of what it could be. I think that if they can figure out a better way to communicate and simplify the build process, if they could expand monitor support to 27 inches, give better access to video ports, and refine some of the mechanisms and build experience elements like the legs and the PCI riser cable, this thing would be absolutely perfect. Do I think it's a failed product? Heck no. And I, do, I, and I don't want Jonan and the team behind the e-blaster to stop innovating. I wanna see this thing get better and better because once you go beyond the build side and the quirks, the e-blaster is an absolutely incredible solution to a lot of different problems. While its current iteration still has some limitations, I know I've said this a million times, but they truly are onto something magical here. This isn't just hyperbole here. When I took it my son to QuakeCon, I recorded a video of slapping his setup together versus mine. While it took me nearly 25 minutes to set his up from beginning to end, mine went 
went from Pelican case to desktop in a matter of seconds. That's the kind of magic that eBlaster is playing with. And that's whether you're traveling on a regular to LAN parties or you're in the living situation that this was created for, the eBlaster really is driving at a solution and it's so close. And with that, this one is done. Those are our thoughts on the eBlaster, but we wanna know what you think. Would a product like the eBlaster solve space issues for you? And what do you think about something like this versus a laptop? And overall, what do you think about the design of it? Let us know down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so that you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this right here on Robitech. And if you wanna continue the conversation, maybe ask if this is the right solution for you or what parts you might wanna put inside of it, head over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash Robitech. It's an amazing place to talk to other tech and PC enthusiasts about stuff just like this. And also, you know what? You might just make a friend. Also, make sure you follow us at Robitech and all your other favorite social media platforms. And since you made it this far, I want to say a huge thank you for hanging out with me. And I always enjoy having you here. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.